One misconception that people have about self-employment that I think is important to clear up is that it's easier than your day job. <laughs> it's it's definitely not easy because you are now wearing all the hats. And if you're not wearing all the hats, you are managing other people that are helping you. And you have to be really, really committed to this dream of yours because it's hard work. It's hard work when you are responsible for your money, when you're not getting a paycheck from anybody else. And I think people need to be ready for that. They need to be ready for the commitment and it needs to come from their heart. In this empowering and inspiring episode, I'm talking with Tiffany, a successful entrepreneur, professional speaker, and podcast host who shares her incredible journey of transitioning from a 20-year career in public education to becoming a successful entrepreneur. Tiffany's passion for advocating for students with disabilities and those from low-income backgrounds led her to realize that she could make a bigger impact by embracing her voice and skills as an entrepreneur. I had the honor to not only be on her podcast, but also meet her in person at a speaking engagement that we both were part of. In this conversation, she shares valuable tips and insights for pursuing an entrepreneurial journey and overcome fear and self-doubt and staying focused on your goals. Are you ready? Well, I'm ready too. Let's start the show. You are listening to the Self-Employed Success Podcast. This is your source for inspiration, advice, and strategies for building financial independence without a traditional corporate job. Each episode features interviews with successful entrepreneurs, freelancers, and business owners who have achieved financial freedom through self-employment. Whether you're just starting out on your entrepreneurial journey or you're a seasoned pro looking for new ideas, this podcast will give you the tools and insights you need to create a life and business that you love. Join us as we explore the world of self-employment and learn how to build the income, the freedom, and fulfillment you deserve. Welcome to the show, Tiffany. I'm super duper excited to have you. This is going to be such a great conversation. And for you listening, you heard my intro and how excited I was to have (laughs) you listen to Tiffany. And so welcome to the show, Tiffany. Yay. Thank you so much for having me. It's always a pleasure when I get to interact with you and your lovely energy. Awesome. Thank you. And so I did mention in the intro of this episode that I had the pleasure, opportunity, and truly the gift to two things, meet you in person and Mm -hmm. being a guest on your wonderful podcast, Radical Audacity. And I love that word audacity so much. And I enjoyed our conversation, right? During our um, conversation during your podcast. And so I'd love to dive in in regards to tips and tricks and all those goodies that you now help others with in regards to using their voices Mm -hmm. as a medium in order for them to successfully be out there and, you know, do the thing that they love to do and get rewarded for it. But before we get there, I'd love for you, Tiffany, to share with us your journey because you know, you mentioned one of the misconceptions, right, in regards to self-employment is that it's better than your day day job. And you (laughs) highlighted that it is hard. Now, we're not here uh, to, you know, intimidate you for you listening. We're we're here to help you. And -hmm. and we're so excited that you're tuned in. And we're hoping that you're going to stay till the end to get the tips and insights. But first, we have to hear Tiffany's story. So you understand that it's a journey. And wherever you are today, listen, it's not the same as Tiffany's or mine. But by listening to her story, I know we know that 
it will give you insights, motivation, and perhaps some, you know, ideas on how for you, you can move forward. And so Tiffany, how did this whole thing started for you? As far as now today, you have your own business, you're a professional speaker, you have an amazing podcast, a wonderful Facebook group community. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. <laughs> how, how did it start? What happened? Oh my goodness. Okay. Before I dive into my story, I do want to say one thing. In my day job, if somebody asked me to bring home work, I was offended, right? It's like, no, no, no. We get our work done during the work day. Let's put our nose to the grindstone and get it done because when I'm home, it's family time. But as an entrepreneur, I love what I do so much that I'm okay staying up late working, I can be flexible. You know, I can get up in the morning and make my kids breakfast and get them off to school. And if they have a special event at school, I could take time off to see them because my hours are flexible. If that means I have to work later at night, no big deal because I get to choose my hours. And because this is coming from my heart, yes, I'm working harder and I'm probably working longer hours than I had when I had a day job, but it's joyful. It feels good. I'm building something for me and for my family. So I just want to clear that up when I said it's hard work. <laughs> it's hard work, but it comes from my heart. And so it doesn't feel, I mean, it feels like hard work, but it doesn't feel like awful work, if that makes any sense. Okay. So getting into my story, I spent 20 years in public education and I believe to my very core that teaching children is important and it's one of the best jobs on this planet and it's one of the hardest jobs. And I loved, I loved what I did so much. I spent 16 years in the classroom in a Title I school, which means it's low socioeconomic, high poverty, um, lots of um, first generation students. And it was a population that I absolutely loved working with and I loved my job. But I got about 16 years into it and started feeling like I really feel like I could make a bigger impact. I, I feel like I, there's systems that need to be changed, right? That the system is not working for all of these children. And I specialized in gifted and talented education and I specialized in um, special needs. They're called twice exceptional students. So they're highly gifted and they also have autism or they have an emotional disability or some sort of learning disorder. And that was my area of specialty. And I really felt like um, our school system didn't serve children with disabilities good enough, especially when they're highly intelligent. And um, I wanted to make big differences in that area, especially for students that, you know, don't come from wealth and privilege. If they co don't come from wealth and privilege and they have a learning disability and they're highly intelligent, it's almost like three strikes against them. And um, I really wanted to help those kids on a larger scale. And so I went and got my master's as a single mom, you know, going to school and working full time and doing all the mom volunteer work and everything and would put the kids to bed at nine. 9, 9.30, worked till 12.30 on my master's work and graduated and was ready to move up into administration in the district office. And I did. I moved up. I started working in the district office, training teachers. But Martine, oh my goodness, mm -hmm. it was as if the joy for my job and my work got sucked out of me. Like I was sucker punched. Once I saw how things actually worked at the district level, I went from this bright-eyed, shiny, hopeful person to just feeling overwhelmed and sad and the bureaucracy and the red tape. And I just felt like I was hitting against that at every every corner, every time I made a suggestion, every time I wanted to change something. And I thought, okay, well, maybe maybe it's happening because I'm at this kind of low level administrative type of place. And maybe I need to go higher. And so I started interviewing to go higher. And Martine, I wasn't getting the jobs. Mm. And I knew I was qualified. I knew I could do this. And so after knocking my head against the wall several times, 
I sat down with my boss and I highly recommend everybody does this. Sit down with your supervisor and have a talk and say, why are things not working out the way they should? And the words she said to me are the greatest gift I have ever received professionally. She said, Tiffany, you are just too passionate. Hmm. You are too much of a change maker and not everybody can meet your passion. And I sat there <laughs> looking at her in the eyes and went, like, excuse me, like, we're in public education and we're teaching a population of kids that is underserved. Like, shouldn't I be passionate? Right. Shouldn't I want to make changes? And she basically, she was very kind. You know, if she had said, Tiffany, you need more experience. Tiffany, you need a mentor. You need a guide. You know, I probably would still be there. But she said that who I am, that my passion does not fit what they're looking for. And if I wanted to stay in that organization and move forward, I had to dim my light. I had to change who I am. And Martine, that was my reckoning moment. Mm. That was my reckoning moment. I went home. I'm not going to lie. I had a shot of whiskey, sat mm -hmm. with it for a little while <laughs> and was like, is this do I want, you know, I've got 15 more years with the school district before I retire. Do I want to hide my light under a basket? Do I want to change who I am? Do I just want to be a yes person? Or do I want to lean into my passion? And do I want to find a place where my voice is valued? Mm. And I realized I, 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 I would die inside if I had to hide my light under a basket, right? And the only path forward for me was finding a path where my voice was valued. And unfortunately, that meant I had to leave the school district. And so, you know, I left my 20 year career, my book and job, my health care, my <laughs> retirement. I left all of it and said, I'm going to find my way. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Listen, whew, that was so good. I, I <laughs> well, First of all, let me tell you, you were definitely gifted to have a boss that one you could talk to about this because I know some people don't have that uh, that open relationship with their boss and they're afraid to say, you know, I, I don't know what's going on, you know. So and then the second thing is I'm so happy that, you know, your boss was able to uh, bring this up to you and say, listen, you're so passionate. This is, you know, there's something else out there for you. Amazing. But again, you're right. For anyone listening, don't be afraid. If you have that relationship at your workplace, do take the opportunity to speak uh, to whomever you report to. You never know. But I guess the question I have for you, Tiffany, that I'm sure the listeners have before we move on into talking more about using your voice, did you actually like quit? And then we're like, I'm quitting. I'm doing this thing on my own. <laughs> or was it like a transition? Like really what happened? <sighs> okay. So I, teachers have contracts and we really can't break our contracts. And so I did finish out the school year. But while I was finishing out that school year, I started leaning into my side hustle. I had already started a podcast. I'd already been taking entrepreneurial courses because I knew I had this seed of desire inside me. I'd already been like teaching podcasting to people on the side and making a couple hundred dollars here and a couple hundred dollars there. So I knew I had something, right? I had a, a little mini side hustle and so I started leaning into that heavier and heavier and thinking, okay, can I make something of this? What can this become? And as I leaned more into that, I started shifting mentally away from my job. I did finish out the school year, but then, you know, at the end of the school year, that was it. I, I did not renew my contract. So, um, you know, it was probably somewhere about a, around a six month transition. Now, I will definitely 100% say that finishing up my contract and starting my new job, um, I, I left without a parachute. <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, I'd been a single mom for many, many, many years. Um, I was in a fairly new committed relationship. So I was no longer truly a single mom, but, but still, you know, my salary, you know, fed my family. And um, I, having been a single parent for so long, I, I really didn't have savings, you know? And while I did put quite a bit of money away in my retirement accounts, I really didn't have liquid savings to like build a new business on. So I, you know, I, I'm not going to lie. The financial struggle was, um, you know, it was real. It was there. Um, and that's, I, I guess it, it made me hungry. <laughs> it's probably a good thing. And um, I just had a deep, deep drive. So built my parachute, built the airplane <laughs> while I jumped right. off the cliff, <laughs> Right, built right. it in the air. <laughs> and, and, and guess what? And you said, heck yes, right? I like, said, heck yes. And this is all over your website. And this is like, you know, this is your motto. This is what, and you mentioned it earlier in the conversation, you know, you were like, I embrace, I was like, I know I have something in me and thank you for sharing your authenticity and the story behind this transition, because so many people, I feel I was a victim of it myself, Tiffany. I used to look at social media and I'm like, oh my gosh, why is it that every time I post, it's not happening for me, mm. like her, like him, like her. And so, and that comparison, but the truth is, and we're all about, you know, keeping it real in my world. Hence why, you know, I love curating amazing people like yourself that are with me here. Um, you're keeping it real. It's a transition. So for you listening, what's the takeaway? Okay. Before we move on to using your voice so that uh, Tiffany could tell you a little bit more about her. Heck yes, you can do it <laughs> to um, support. We're talking about, you know, truly mindset work. We're talking about truly networking and being around people that truly want you to succeed and being mm -hmm. honest with you. We're talking yes. about having that plan, but also being okay, right? With the ups and downs, knowing that you're working towards that success. We're talking about scaling with precision, but most importantly, we're talking about being yourself and saying, heck yes, I got this. I can re-engineer my life if I want to. I can take inventory of my life and say, I'm good here. I'm good there. Let me rent that up. Heck yes. Heck yes. You got this, right? And so <laughs> before I hand over the mic over to Tiffany again, so that she could dive in a little bit more in regards to the power of your voice, truly. She helps other entrepreneurs and people with that are passionate, change makers like herself, use their voice, right? To mm -hmm. make an impact and beyond. She's going to talk to you about this. Uh, but before we do that, I just want to take a moment. Tiffany and I want to take a moment to congratulate you for listening all the way to this point. This means a lot to us. It means that you're invested. It means that we know that when I say towards the end of this conversation, check out the show notes, you will do that uh, because you're still here and listening. And so we want to thank you for that. We want to applaud you for that. And with that said, if you're walking the dog, doing your laundry, driving right now, listening to us, make a note to rewind, get a notepad and a pen, write, write everything down, listen, because we're talking about a lot of good stuff. And right now, Tiffany's going to dive in um, with you for about one to two minutes or so to tell you a little bit more about your voice and how important it is and, um, you know, that you should use it. Okay. And so Tiffany, I'm sending the mic over to you. Make sure you can catch it. <laughs> sending it over. Yay. Caught it. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> I, you know, I love that um, segue into the power of our voice because it is definitely the soapbox I stand on. As women, Martine, we know that our voices throughout history have been subdued, have been hidden, have been erased um, as, you know, people of color, LGBTQ people, trans people, like whatever, if you're not in the quote unquote norm, your voice was erased from history. It is still being done in a lot of societies. I just read a news article about some schools in Florida that are trying to erase the history of slavery in America, right? They just don't want it to be talked about. And it's, it's to me, that is not okay. 
we have voices. And this is the first time in history that gatekeepers cannot hold our voices back. If you want to start a podcast, you can start a podcast with a mic and a computer and the heart to do it. If you want to start a YouTube channel, grab a camera and start a YouTube channel. If if you want a powerful social media presence, nobody's going to stop you, right? It doesn't matter how you show up and how you share your voice. You get to do it. You get to self-publish your own book. Nobody is going to tell you that your message cannot be heard. And so this is the time to raise the volume on your voice. And here's the hard part, Martine. Mm. We have this permission. We have this ability and it feels terrifying, especially for those of us who have been told for so long that our voice doesn't have value, that our voice is annoying, that we're too loud, we're too bossy, we're too, you know, whatever the too much is or the too little is. So many of us has been, have been socialized to believe that our voice does not have value and it is the time to smash through that. And I'd love to say that it's easy. <laughs> I'd love to say, hey, you know, a little bit of mindset work and you got this and grab a mic and you can run. But, you know, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of deep-seated stuff. And I'm guessing that you, <laughs> just like me, when going through this process of showing up in a more public way with your podcast, with your social media, you yeah, probably hit a ton of fear barriers, mm. like these mm. giant walls of why me? Why would anybody want to listen to mm-hmm. me? What do I have to say on this? And we as women especially think we have to be massive experts for anybody to listen to us, right? When in reality, you're an expert because you lived your life. Like nobody else has lived the life you lived or had the experiences that you have had. And you, Martine, you know this. Like, Oh, yes. Your mm-hmm. experiences are so unique and shape your perspective in such a unique way. And there are people that need to hear it. There are people that are inspired by your story. Your story of what you went through as a child and what you have survived and what you've made of your life, that is inspiring. And you are an expert in your life. You are the hero in your own life. And so if you can lean into that and you can truly embrace that, then you get to show up and you will change the world. Even if you change it for two or three people, it doesn't matter because that has ripple effects, right? That's another misconception is that somehow we need to have 3 million followers to truly make an impact. Mm -hmm. But that's not true. That's Mm -hmm. not true. If you... If you save one, if you're not a, a, a doctor, if you're like a normal person and you save one person's life, you know, you you push somebody away from a speeding car or you stop somebody that's choking, uh, save a child from drowning, you can live your whole life knowing you saved a person's life mm-hmm. and you feel pretty good. When we use our voice, we impact people that we never see. We impact people. We have no idea the ripple effects we have on the world. And so it's, to me, it's actually an act of service and an act of love to get on the mic, get on the camera, write down your, uh, you know, get that type your typewriter going, <laughs> mm-hmm. going back in time there. But whatever mm-hmm. it is, whatever your medium is for getting your voice out, it's an act of service and an act of love to do it. Mm-hmm. And we need to do it. We need to yes. do it. Yes. Heck yes. Heck, Heck yes. yes. We need to do it. <laughs> and, 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 you know, you nailed it. You know, a lot of us have the fear going out to, uh, you know, public. Why me? Why me? And that's normal. We're human. We have emotions, but here's the thing. You don't have to do it by yourself. You have mm-hmm. the opportunity to have someone like your heck yes coach who's right <laughs> here with me to truly invest time and energy with you and help you along the way to show up and serve. And because that's what you want to do. We know it because you're here. You're listening all the way to this point. You're saying, heck yes, ladies, I got you. I feel you. I want this too. And so if this is you, we want you to take the next step. I want to invite you. Tiffany and I want to invite you 
to check out the show notes of this episode and also hear out where Tiffany is hanging out the most. Where are you hanging out the most, Tiffany? <laughs> well, besides in my sweatpants in my house, <laughs> where I hang out the most on social media is probably Facebook and Instagram. Um, okay, yeah, Instagram. I'm more. I'm the most active on Instagram. You, okay, good. So I love getting a DM. That would yes. be my thing. You know, reach out, DM me. I I'm a real person that looks at my DMs, and I make a true effort to um, respond back to every beautiful soul that spends their time and energy reaching out to me. I think that's valuable and precious and I will respond. Wonderful. Wonderful. And so all of this is in the show notes. If you are listening, you're like, I want to get in the DM right now. It's <laughs> Tiffany Kane. Okay. Tiffany Kane, T-I-P-H-A-N-Y, Kane, K-A-N-E on Instagram. Shoot her a note. Let her know that you listen to this episode. And uh, check out the show notes to get information about her website and many, many other things. And so this this is it for us. But I know you had a great time with us listening. I'm hoping because uh, if you did have a great time, not only you're going to send a DM to Tiffany, you can send a DM to me. I know that's a lot of work for you, but whatever you want to <laughs> do, send us a you know comment, like share this episode with somebody else. We're here to tell you, you got this heck yes. And uh, Tiffany, any final word before we go away and say bye-bye? I just want to tell everybody listening that each and every person listening has a special story, a special inspiring thing about them, and to really believe it, to believe they are the hero in their own story and that there is somebody out there that will be inspired by their story. And so share it. You have just listened to an episode of the Self-Employed Success Podcast. I'm your host, Martine, and I'm so happy that you tuned in. I hope that you'll come again and remember to subscribe, share this with a friend, and most importantly, remember to stay focused, keep showing up, do your thing, because you are a successful self-employed man or woman. You got this. And just like Tiffany said in this episode, heck yes, you got it, honey. You got it. I will see you in the next episode. Thank you so much for listening.